for your love in the 20th chapter of the gospel according to John, John chapter 20, the 20th chapter of the gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 20th verse, we find the words of our text uh, for this hour. John chapter 20, verse 20, very moving passage. The Bible lets us know from the New International Version translation of the Greek New Testament, it simply says, after he said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Jesus showed them his hands and his side. Uh, the New Living Translation said, after Jesus said this, he showed them the scars in his hands and the wounds in his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. I want to put a tag on this text, and for a few moments, I want to talk about I've got the scars to prove it. I've got the scars to prove it. What is it that you have been through that ain't through with you? I'll hang out there because all of us, if we are honest with ourselves, have been through enough hell in our lives to write a book. I don't know who you are, but already I'm in your Kool-Aid, got your flavor, and you just had a flashback to some of the drama that you've been through, some of the hell that you've been through. But I want to park here parenthetically because the question this morning is, what is it that you have been through that ain't through with you? In a real sense, it happened back then, but it's still jacking with you right now. Back then, it hurt you. Right now, it haunts you. Back then, it injured you. Right now, it interferes with you. All of us have been through enough hell, drama, and junk where we, in a real sense, could write our own book, tell our own story. That's why you ought not ever look down your nose of snobbery at anybody you see because you don't know what somebody has been through. That's why you ought never have hate on anybody else's glory because you sure don't know the story. I've discovered behind all glory there is a story. A story of pain. A story of sacrifice. A story of struggle. A story of hateration. All of us have a story. But the question again I raise right now is what is it that you have been through that is not through with you? You're not feeling me like I need you to. Let me make this plain. Maybe you've heard the story of one Araminta Ross. Araminta Ross was born during the dark days of slavery in what Maya Angelou calls these yet to be United States of America. Araminta Ross grew rapidly. She was strong and even as a teenager her strength was so manifest that she had to work in the fields from sun up to sundown. She labored and she worked hard. Araminta Ross however believed in the truth of the song the spiritual and before I be a slave I'll be buried in my grave go home to my God and be free and refuse to accept slavery as her lot check out Araminta Ross as a teenager only 13 years old she sees one of her fellow slaves trying to escape the overseer sees him and throws a two pound weight in his direction Araminta Ross then shielded that slave but in the process the two pound weight hit her in the head leaving a deep gash the deep gash my brothers and sisters so impacted her that for the rest of her life she was subjected to dizzy spells where she would black out pass out why because she when she was just a teenager she got in the way of someone trying to escape to freedom was hit by a two pound weight even as an adult she would pass out she was subjected to dizzy spells even as an adult one could see the deep gash in her head that gash in a real sense was a scar that had a story what was the story she was trying to protect someone who was trying to flee to freedom and in the process of protecting that other slave she was hit it left a gash the gash had a story that caused her to pass out and experience dizzy spells it was a scar that 
that had a story. In a real sense, it injured her back then, but it interfered with her in her life and the rest of her life. And I'm talking to somebody, there may not be a physical gash on your head, but you have a wound. You have a psychological, emotional wound. It happened back then, but it hurts you. It haunts you. It hits you right now. Somebody is in the house. I'm bowling down your alley, huh? I got you real good. Why? Because God ordered your steps. Because here you are in church today. People are looking at you and ain't got a clue about the hell you've been through, the drama you've endured, and all that you have been delivered from. I don't care who you are. All of us have some scars and some wounds. Now, hang out with me because understand, uh, the scar is not the experience itself, but the scar is the evidence that lingers that you had that experience. The scar, my brothers and sisters, is something you have right now that reminds you of what happened back then. Uh, I hang out there because somebody has a scar. I don't know what it is. Maybe your scar is insecurity or low self-esteem. Maybe your scar is a guilt complex. Maybe your scar is a brother who does not trust sisters or a sister who doesn't think anything of brothers. Maybe your scar, my brothers and sisters, is you always have drama in your relationships. Maybe your scar is a jealous spirit where you hate to see anybody else get something that you feel should have come your way. Or maybe your scar is the fact that you always have a negative dysfunctional relationships that never seem to work out. I don't know what your scar is, but all of us have a scar. And the question is, since we have that scar that is the lingering evidence of what happened back then, are we going to allow that scar to have the last word on us? Well, if you are hooked up with the Holy One because you have joined Jesus Christ, the good news of the gospel is we have a Savior who was scarred for heaven's hero, earth's emancipator, our Lord, leader, liberator, Jesus the Christ was scarred. I guess you don't know the story. I might as well let you know. He was scarred. He was wounded. Y'all act like you're not feeling me. He was scarred. Why? Because the Bible lets us know. He was stabbed in the back by somebody he thought he could trust in that Judas, my brothers and sisters, betrayed him with a kiss. Judas therefore began to manifest the song the OJ sang. What they doing? Smiling in your face all the while want to take your place. And so Jesus is scarred. Watch this by a backstabber, but then he is scarred by abandonment because the Bible says that all of his disciples left him. They abandoned him. Somebody's in the house. You know what it's like to be abandoned by someone that brought you into this world, but it's done nothing to help you make it in this world. Jesus is abandoned, but not only that, he was physically abused. They beat him all night long. He was nailed to a cross. He was he, he was stabbed in his side. Jesus was physically abused, but hold on. The story does not end there because they put him in the tomb, stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, but early Sunday got up from the grave with all power. Hold on. I, I thought y'all were an old school church. You see, in an old school church, whenever a preacher is preaching and the sermon ain't going too well, all the preacher had to do to rescue a dying sermon was to take it to Calvary because once he got it to Calvary, he knew that all of a sudden a dead sermon could get resurrected. I guess y'all don't remember. Let me give you a flashback to old school church. The preacher's preaching all of a sudden says, and he died one dark Friday. He died until the moon dripped in blood. He died until they put him in the tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Now, let me tell you, in an old school church, the folk would do like y'all doing right now. They'd be up, they'd be clapping, they'd be going crazy. And Bishop, that used to bother me. I'm a little kid wondering, why do y'all go crazy over the same old story? I can predict what the preacher's going to say. Why do you start shouting every time the preacher says early? He got up from the grave. Well, what's up with that? Well, I was a kid back then. I've grown up now. I've had to go in my own Gethsemane, climb 
from my own Calvary. I've been buried and given up on, but every now and then God gives me resurrection power. So y'all excuse me, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Listen, y'all, it's about to get gooder because the Bible says Jesus is up. And when he's up, he appears first of all to a sister, appears to Mary Magdalene in chapter 20. And the book says when he appears to Mary, I'm loving this thing. She runs to tell the disciples and Peter and another run to the tomb. And the book says they saw it as she declared it. And then the Bible says, and here comes the shout. Jesus then shows up later on that day, that resurrection day. And when he shows up, the book says he showed them his hands and his side. You're not shouting. The same hands that had taken a 12-year-old a daughter of Jairus and lifted her from death to resurrection. The same hands that had taken two fish, five loaves of bread, and fed a multitude. The same hands that stopped the funeral beer of a son of a widow from Nain and turned a funeral into a festival. The same hands that had taken some spit and some dirt and turned it into healing medicine and restored blind eyes the same hands he showed them his hands and y'all the text says when they saw his hands they rejoiced he didn't shout he didn't shout it's not that they recognized the hands that had made such a difference but they recognized the nail prints they recognized the scars they recognized the wounds why because all of us have been wounded but jesus says though you've been wounded you can be a wounded winner though you've been scarred you can be a scarred success and there's somebody in the house today that's your word and that is your house have been wounded but God gave you power through your pain and now you are where you are not in spite of your wounds but because of your wounds <laughs> uh, okay all right you know what I feel you I feel you I feel you you want to shout, but you can't because you were still tripping on Araminta Ross, who I told you about at the beginning of the sermon. You feel sorry for her because she had that gash. She had that, those dizzy spells. You don't know her as Araminta Ross. You know her as Harriet Tubman because Harriet Tubman changed her name from Araminta to Harriet because that was her mama's name. And when Harriet changed her name, Harriet refused to stay a slave and made 19 trips up north as she set the captives free and every now and then while she was traveling she would get dizzy and pass out but when she passed out those with her would just wait until she came back to and then she would keep on heading them up to freedom in the north and one biographer said about her that when she passed out she never did watch this get caught she never watched this who was taken back into slavery and somebody said how did she do do that and the biographer said evidently as long as she was conscious she was working for the Lord knowing whenever she was unconscious the Lord would work for her is there anybody here who can go ahead and testify that's the kind of God we have God says yes you've been scarred yes you've been wounded yes you've been hurt but that hurt doesn't have to have the last word on you uh, okay, okay, okay. I feel you. You, you, you. you saying, Freddie Haynes, you telling my story. I'm scarred. I'm wounded. But you said I can succeed and win because of my scars. Because of my wound. How does that work? Three, and I raise up out of here. Number one, this may shout you right here. The text tells us our scarred Savior always breaks through shut down doors to set his people free. I used to be slow. Y'all missed your shout. Our scarred Savior always breaks through shut doors to set his people free. You're still not shouting. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Tex 
says in verse 19, Jesus came into the upper room where they were. Watch this. They were locked. You didn't get that. The church is locked in a room because they don't know their Savior is alive. The church is shut up behind closed doors instead of being in the community because they're acting like their Savior is dead. The church is not out in the community, but they're shut up behind closed doors because they're acting like the Savior is dead. God deliver me from these dead churches that act like Jesus is dead and they're locked behind closed doors instead of being out in the community during the week. Do, do, do you know you can't really call yourself a follower of Jesus? If all you do is work inside. Oh my God. That's why I love Elder Simmons and his ministry. Because he ain't just stuck inside. Inside your worship. Outside your work. They're not getting this. I got to help you. If you follow Jesus, you got to follow him outside. Guess where Jesus was when he fed the 5,000? outside. Guess where Jesus was when he healed the man born blind? Outside. Guess where Jesus was when he, when, when, he, when, when he told Zacchaeus, come on down and brought salvation to his house? Outside. Guess where Jesus was when he met the woman at the well and changed her life? Outside. Y'all gonna catch this soon. Guess where Jesus was when he walked on the water? Outside. Guess where Jesus was when he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and the crowd cried out Hosanna outside guess where Jesus was when he died one dark Friday he was not crucified in a church between some candles it was outside on a cross between some thieves but early Sunday morning he got up with all power guess where he was outside the Bible says he, he took a cloud and went back to heaven guess where the cloud was outside but the Bible says says he's coming back again and when he comes back he'll descend with the shout and when he descends with the shout the church will be called up to meet him in midair guess where midair is outside guess where we belong outside well we need to get the hell out of here and do the work of the Lord outside But wait, 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 wait. They're locked inside, not by the door, but by fear. Oh, Freddie Haynes, you preaching, thank you. Uh, 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 uh. Fear will lock you up. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Imagine where you would be if you were not afraid of the consequences. Imagine what choices you would have made long ago if you had not had any fear in your heart. Fear, my brothers and sisters, will control you. It will make a slave out of you. It will order your steps and cause you to stop. And the disciples, the Bible says, are locked up for fear of the Jews. Oh, you missed that. They scurred. They scurred. And Jesus breaks in where they are. Watch this, because you don't have to be in prison to be a prisoner. That's good, huh? You don't have to be locked up to be on lockdown. You don't have to have chains on your hands to be a captive. Jesus breaks in and Jesus says in the Haynes remix, chill. And once he says chill, he shows him his hands and his side. And the text says they were afraid and now they're overjoyed. Why? Because Jesus broke in to their closed door situation and set them free from the inside out. Come here, come here, because that's what God wants to do to somebody today. And that is set you free on the inside. 
you're not getting this, you're not getting this. Uh, uh, my ministerial mentor, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, does a, does a Jeremiah Wright remix on Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro when they were thrown in the fiery furnace. And the, Nebuch and, and, and the Bible says, according to Daddy J, uh, the Bible says that God convened a council in glory, a cosmic council. And Daddy J says that when he convened the Cosmic Council of Angels, he said, my boys are about to get thrown in a fiery furnace. I don't want them to perish. And so I need to know what angel can get down there the quickest to set my boys free. And so Michael said, God, let me go down there. God said, how long will it take you? God, give me 90 seconds and I can move from eternity to earth. God said, 90 seconds, they'll be burnt up by then. Neb just turned up the furnace seven times hotter than normal. You too slow. Gabriel says, God. God, let me do the doggone thing. God says, how long will it take you, Gabriel? Gabriel said, God, give me 30 seconds, and I'm in the furnace with them. God said, no, that's too long. You've taken too long. They will end up burnt up. God said, well, I guess I got to handle this thing myself. The angel said, well, if you handle it, God, how long will it take you to get there? God said, haven't you heard? I'm already there. And all I'm trying to say, the Bible says God got in the furnace with them I'm about to get you God get in the furnace with them the text says they were thrown in the furnace bound but when the Lord got in there with them the text says they were walking around loose in the fire God is so good God ain't got to take you out of the fire God can get in the fire with you and set you free while you're in it I'm holding y'all too long. It's getting good to me. I got to rush on. But not only that, watch this. The text then says, oh, this is good. Your scars, when you hook up with Jesus, your scars say, yes, I've been through, but because of Jesus, I ain't through. I got to say that again because that was so good. Uh, uh, yes, I've been through hell. Yes, I've been through fire. Yes, I've been through trauma. But guess what? Though I have been through, I'm still here because I ain't through. You know, my scars don't have the last word on me. I'm still standing. I'm still surviving. I've been through it. But guess what? I ain't through because God ain't through with me. Okay. I, I got to take y'all to my, one of my favorite scenes in all of cinematic history, Color Purple. Seely has been abused, scarred, dissed, and dogged. Heartbroken, stepped on, but she gets that thing together. And now Mr. tries to hit her one more time, raises his hand, and Seely... Everything you done to me, gonna come back double on you. She ain't scared no more. And then Mr. tries to abuse her verbally and says, look at you, you're poor, you're black, and you're ugly. She says, I may be poor, I may be black, and I may be ugly, but by God's grace, I'm still here. Is there anybody in the house that can testify? Yes, you've been through fire. Yes, you've been through drama. But you're still here. You're still here. Still here. Oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving this because Jesus says, I'm still here. Don't give up on me. I'm still here. I've died, yes, but I'm still here. I was nailed to a cross, but I'm still here. Uh, uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, okay? I'm sorry for holding you so long. It's just getting good to me because... Because I don't know about you, but I've been scarred. I, I got some wounds in my life, so I'm trying to really hurry this thing up. But the more I think of some of the junk I've been through, some of the knives I pulled out of my back, some of the pain I've endured, the heartbreak I've had to go through, and yet here I am still standing. But not just that, I'm standing in one of the greatest churches on the planet because God in amazing grace said, yes, you've been through it, but you ain't through. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. Here it is, and I'm done. Here it is. 
finally, this, this, this is your shout. Every scar you have ooh, is evidence that God has power at work with you so God can accomplish great things through you. Shh, you missed that. Uh, 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 uh. Whatever you've been through, it simply set the stage for everything that God wants to do through your life. That's why I thank God for free in one, because you're talking about scarred brothers and sisters by addiction, scarred by abuse. But look at them now, and they are not just saying I'm free, but they're saying I've been set free so I can turn around and free somebody else. Listen, whenever God does something with you, and delivers you. That ain't no time to get snobbish. That ain't no time to get judgmental. That's when you go back into that same hood and say there is no secret. What God can do, what God did for me, God can do it for you. Is there anybody here who can testify God set me free and now, okay, 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 I gotta get you. I gotta get you. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, uh, I have a wonderful, wonderful daughter, Avani Jewel. That's my baby's name, Avani Jewel. She's 13, going on 33. And, and Avani, Avani this summer uh, uh, thought she was going to spend it watching TV. So, uh, no, you're going to think this summer. So I gave her book reports where she had to read a book, write about it, critique it, review it, and give it to me. And so, so she's doing that thing. And while doing that thing, check this. Uh, she was writing her book report because they write it in pencil with a pencil and so the pencil got dull pencil got dull pencil got dull so I took the pencil I said ah let me get it sharp for you I'm taking the pencil to the pencil sharpener and y'all this happened I'm, I'm, I'm really all right but this happened I'm taking the pencil to the pencil sharpener and it began to talk to me I'm all right I really am okay the pencil said Freddie why would you do this to me I said, I said, first of all, you ain't talking to me. Yes, I am. Shakespeare said there are sermons in stones. Jesus said if these hold their peace, rocks will cry out. So if stones can give a sermon and rocks can rejoice, you're going to get some preaching from a pencil. I said, all right, pencil, what's up with you? He said, I really don't want you to sharpen me. I said, but you can't get used if you're dull. He said, you got a point there. He said, but I hate being sharpened because you got to cut me. You got to cut me for me to be sharp. I said, that's my point. I said, if you are going to be used to do what you've been made to do, understand I ain't going to cut you off. I'm just going to cut away the stuff that keeps you from being sharp as you should. Come here. It's time to shout. Is there anybody here that's been cut by God? God said, I did not cut you to cut you off, but I cut you because I'm cutting away the stuff that's not going to make you the sharp saint that you need to become. God will cut you not to destroy you, but so God can use you. I'm through. I'm through. But Bishop, here's what got me. The text says, when Jesus showed them his hands and side, they were overjoyed. Watch this. Knowing I was coming here, I had to do my homework because Bishop is a brilliant man. I had to do my homework. I had to come correct. And so etymologically, I unpacked the word overjoyed in the Greek and discovered the word overjoyed is a picture where basically Jesus showed them his side and his hands and they ran to him and jumped all up on him. And Jesus then went Mike Jones on him. Y'all know Mike Jones, rapper. Uh, Mike Jones has a song that says, Back then, you didn't know me. Now I'm hot. You all own me. Jesus told his disciples, Back then, you didn't know me. Now I'm up and you all own me. And there's somebody here, that's your testimony. You can tell anybody, back then I was abused. Now I'm up, I'm anointed. Back then I was bruised. Now I'm up, now I'm blessed. Back then I was confused. Now I'm up, I'm a conqueror. Back then I was down. Now I'm up, I'm delivered. 
back then I messed up now I'm up I'm blessed up so don't be discouraged joy comes in the morning God is standing by stand still and look up God is going to show up there is a bomb in Gilead God is so good God will heal you God will raise you up God will deliver you and you can tell your folk at work tomorrow back then you didn't want me but now I'm up now I'm up now I'm up